So what's life like in Blackpool? It's all crackheads, bagheads, pissheads, stabbings, all kinds of mad on here, bro. Uh, it's tough, mate. It's tough. It's hard. It's um, you know, it's a uh, lower end. People are struggling. You know, it's drinking drugs. They've been fested the place. But all British resorts, they're all on their ass. Welcome to Blackpool, a seaside town that rough that they have destroyed old cars upside down on the beach. I can't even begin to imagine the story of how this old Peugeot ended up upside down on Blackpool Beach and another one out there. Look, Blackpool is probably the most requested seaside town for me to visit from people that watch this channel and I've been waiting for the right person to show me around I need a true local to tell me the story of this decline in town so I've reached out to Stephen a wonderful youtuber with a channel called walk on the wild side and he's gonna show me around today Stephen what the hell's going on mate I have no idea you know I've lived in Blackpool a long time in fact all my life and the very few times I've ever seen a car get stranded on the beach and to come down here today to see not one but two cars is just, I, I can't believe it. What's going on? You invite me all the way here to Blackpool <laughs> and there's upside down Peugeots on the beach. What am I letting myself in for? Let's explore Blackpool mate. So here, mate, we've got the two faces of Blackpool just before we walk back into the town centre. We've got the swanky Hampton by Hilton, and then we've got the Waldorf, which is kind of like in between the two, and then this abandoned one here. What's the story here in this crescent? Well, just down here on this crescent, uh, we've got uh, an abandoned hotel. It's been closed for about 10 years. It was shut down by the council, I believe, 2014. And ever since then, it's just been going into uh, worst state of dereliction year upon year. Well, you can probably remember, you're born and bred in Blackpool, you can probably remember these places when they were booming. Well, the thing is, I, I grew up in Blackpool and remember the 70s, and, and the decline in Blackpool actually started in the 70s, but we didn't really notice that. Uh, we, we loved it, you know, we used to go to the Pleasure Beach, we'd go to the piers, we'd go on the beach, Granddad used to, ta Granddad used to take us to a lot of places. And for us, it was brilliant growing up in Blackpool. We didn't see the decline, but the decline had started in the 70s and continued. By the time we got to the 80s, I would say it was pretty obvious. It was noticeable. You know, it was pretty obvious yeah. then that uh, something was wrong. So this is the famous Blackpool Pleasure Beach, mate. That's it, right? Not much action at the moment. Not when does it open? I think it's going to be opening in March. Yeah. We'll probably open at weekends to start off with. Yeah. And uh, I remember when you used to be able to walk through it, we used to come down here to the Blackpool Pleasure Beach and you used to be able to waltz in, walk in, you, get, you buy your tickets for the ride, for the big rides like the Big Dipper and all that sort of thing. Well, they changed that um, around about the millennium or something like that, where you now have to pay. Everybody has to pay to get into Blackpool Pleasure Beach. So a lot of people are not happy about it. So more like an Alton Towers, like you pay for your ticket yeah. to get in, rather That's than... It. Sounds like a test, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So rather than just you you're saying that they used to pay per ride, yeah. which makes it more affordable for families, yeah. they can budget what the kids go on. And now, how much is it to get in? But the main reason, I think it's around about uh, fifty pound if you're paying on the day, which is not cheap, is it? But per person. Yeah. So for a family of four, it's two hundred quid. Um, yeah, I might be wrong. Oh. On that. <laughs> if if he's wrong, we'll put it on screen. Yeah. But one of the reasons why they chose to do that, one of the reasons why is because back in the sort of 80s and 90s, that sort of time, when people used to just come into Blackpool Pleasure Beach and just waltz in and waltz out, used to get a lot of football fans and there used to be a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it keeps, it kind of keeps the riffraff out, but that's the idea. Often in the comments, people say, Wendell, you're visiting these seaside towns in winter. Of course they're going to be dead. Of course they're going to be depressing. And there is accuracy to those comments. But of course, I will return to these seaside towns in summer and see how vibrant they are, see what the atmosphere is like and talk to the people when the tourists are around. So you're visiting from the Midlands, mate. Yes. What, what do you think about Blackpool these days? Well, I'm not quite sure really because it's, it's out of season. 
but you know we can have a look around and hopefully remind us of when we was younger yeah a lot of people come because it brings back yeah, fond yeah. memories of we used childhood. to do coach trips from the working men's clubs back in the day for the day trip and things like that and it just brings reminiscences and we also played spot the tower as we're driving in okay mate yeah so it's bringing back good memories yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah i think that blackpool has a warm place in so many people's hearts from yesteryear but unfortunately i don't know how much longer blackpool can survive on nostalgia we can't get away from this street corner because stephen's got so many fans in blackpool that um we might get stopped a lot walking around i think this shows you that stephen is without doubt the premier Blackpool YouTuber and you should check his channel out, it's called Walk on the Wild Side. A walk on the wild side I should say. Holy shit I'm thirsty! Walking around Britain, talking to the general public, I often get vloggers cotton mouth. I find myself reaching for a can of pop or an energy drink just to keep me going but we all know that these drinks are so bad for you it's not only the sugar that's in regular soft drinks but it's the nasty chemicals that are in diet and zero soft drinks too I think it's time we all made a change and that's why I drink holy it combines great taste with a clear conscience it's a super fruity and no bullshit alternative with no artificial flavors or colorings and zero sugar it comes in at under 20 calories per serving and has a taste fit for a king simply mix holy with 500 mils of water shake and enjoy i love the holy iced tea series my favorite flavor is apple green tea it's perfect because it's refreshing and revitalizing and it's great for a tea party here on the beach in sunny Blackpool. Cheers. They have loads of flavors. I recommend you try out the starter sets first so you can find out what's your favorite flavor. Tell me what's your flavor. Oh! Use my code Wendell5 for five pounds off your first order over 14.99 at uk.weareholy.com forward slash wendell so this is station road mate yeah station road yeah directly opposite the south pier yeah yeah and uh it looks a little bit desolate at the moment uh, but once we get into the season you know it will be quite busy around here really. yeah i just uh, i came across this thought then when i was talking to a couple of your uh, your fans on the street corner and you know the one guy mentioned that they love coming back here because it reminds them of really great childhood memories do you think that Blackpool is almost trading on nostalgia a little bit yeah yeah I think it is yeah because like a lot of people say that's what a lot of people say yeah we remember coming here a lot of people on my channel they, they put comments in saying I remember going there and when in the 60s you know and I remember what it used to be like and it's, you know, it brings back memories. Yeah, but I mean, the, the thought to me is that one of the reasons why there might be some struggle here too now is that it does have to move forward, doesn't it? It does have to modernise. It can't trade on nostalgia forever. And these generations of people that are nostalgic, they're eventually, they're not going to yeah, be with us. Yeah, that's right. We have yeah, to always yeah. move forward if we yeah. want prosperity, especially in our seaside towns. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That, that's a good point, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's check out, and um, we're going to turn a, take a left here, are we, mate? And yeah. um, when we drove in, you start to see more of the um, slightly dilapidated side of Blackpool. Uh, this is Bond Street. Bond Street which I've featured in my channel quite a few times. It was once a really thriving shopping street. It's only a small section of Bond Street. It's actually quite a long street, but this section here where the shops are, uh, we remember back in the 70s and the 80s coming here and it, it was the place to be really. They had a Woolworths, they had record stores, they had all these, the, these other shops and uh, it was really, really busy. But if you look at it today, it's... Yeah. it's uh, I can tell the difference between businesses that are 
shut down for the season and then businesses that are just shut down you can tell by the state of disrepair and as we're moving down this street we're starting to see a lot more disrepair um, yeah. you know the unfortunately Blackpool is synonymous with boarded up buildings hotels you can see one over there this area of Bond Street does it get busier in summer or is it always like this? Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same even in the summer. Yeah, so we're looking at it now in sort of back, well, last, last day of February. Looks a bit grim, doesn't it? Yeah. But, uh, What's the story with this here? That's the old Woolworths. That's uh, the old Woolworths? It used to be, yeah, it used to be Woolworths until Woolworths shut down. I can't remember when that was. Was it, um, was it mid 90s? I can't remember. And then it became the Heart Store. As you see, it's got the Heart logo on there. And that was quite a popular store for a long, many years, many years, the heart store. In fact, they used to sell Christmas decorations in there all year round. They got quite famous for it. But since the heart store closed down, which is probably getting on for, I don't know, maybe getting on for 10 years ago, um, the person that owns the building wants to knock it down and turn it into a car park. And he's in a bit of a dispute with the council. And because it's got this to and fro in dispute, the council don't they want to keep the building, he wants a car park. And, and as, because of that, we've still got this, you see. This area of Blackpool, where we are now, South Shore, there was a lot of landlords that bought up properties. They actually bought up streets back in the 80s. And, um, and the council had to crack down on it because they were turning the, these buildings, which were all hotels or guest houses, turning them into bedsits, the HMOs, and eventually the council had to crack down because they were just, the areas were just running, just becoming so run down. Yeah. The people that were moving into it had problems, alcoholism and mental health issues and all that sort of thing. So they had to crack down on it in the late 90s. So what the council is doing now is they're trying to, they have regulations now where there's only so many people you can have on but in, a, in, a, in an area, they have like a minute, a maximum amount of people to try to stop these uh, rogue landlords trying to cram all these people in. A lot of people in Blackpool live in very hard situations. In the 2019 survey, a study, whatever you want to call it, um, highlighting the 10 most deprived areas in Britain, Jaywick was top, but Blackpool had eight areas out of those 10 that were the most deprived areas in England. So, you know, it's important that we also show how the people live in these areas of Blackpool. It's not all tourism, pleasure beach and holidays by the seaside. What's this street like? What's, what's life like uh, working in retail in this area? I like it. It's fun, mate. It's you see, you, you see a lot of stuff on this road, mate. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for the what? most part, everybody's quite nice. Oh, What's happening? <laughs> What's happening, yeah. So you, you run the, the tattoo shop here on the Lytham Road. I do. Yeah. What's this area of Blackpool like? Rough road. Rough. Crackheads, bagheads, pissheads, stabbings, all kinds of mad shit on here, bro. Yeah. Pretty dangerous place at night? Uh, mate, it depends who you are, innit? Yeah. Same as everywhere, depends who you are, depends yeah. how you carry yourself. If you want to look like a victim, you get shot like a victim. Yeah. If you, if you like, look you're for trouble, victim, you're not going to get shot like a victim. Really, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a few bad guys around, but there's a few, there's a few decent people. Yeah. Every community's the same, innit? How's business in the tattoo shop? Yeah, busy. It? It's shit, mate. Uh, it's tough, mate. It's tough. It's hard. It's, um, you know, it's uh, lower end. People are struggling. You know, it's drink and drugs. They've infested the place, and it's not, it's, you know. They don't put enough money into the place, you know, and that's, that's my experience of it. Okay, mate. Yeah, yeah no appreciate problem, it. Thank man, you. Mate. Have a good day. So, what's life like in Blackpool? It's a shithole. And why do you say that? Because they only, the council only, only care about the fronts yep. to get people to come in. Yeah. Us that live here have got to go up here. That's not there, that's not there. So, you get a couple of streets back and you see the Wood real Blackpool. Street. Just walk down here. Yeah. Just walk down there. We have, yeah. Wood Street behind yeah, from. It's a shithole. Yeah, so what do you think about what that chap had to say? Yeah, he was being quite uh, blunt there, wasn't he? But if you, if we say, go from South Pier and all the way up to, say, 
even all the way up to King Square, all you have to do really is probably come back one block from the promenade and you're into um, it's not a pretty sight in some parts. Yeah. And where we are now on Lytham Road is probably one of the most uh, depressed parts of Blackpool. Lytham Road between Waterloo Road, where we've just been, all the way up to the promenade is, is uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty de depressing along here. What's it like walking around seeing all this every day? I get used to it all the time. So You're used to it? I think of, uh, about three, four years I've lived up here roughly. Okay, yeah. So this is the apparently excellent South Shore Pit Stop Cafe. So what's life like running a cafe in this area of Blackpool? Well, we're only about seven months in. Okay. So we're a new cafe. Yeah. Um, we're all about our locals, we're all about our customers, we're all about mental health, we're all about ensuring everybody's happy. So, um, what's it like? Hard, but rewarding. Blackpool, like, nationally, has got a reputation of being quite in decline as a mm -hmm. seaside town. In reality, what's life like living here, like early 2024, with a family, with a business? Is it as bad as people can say and see? Um, I think it's a mixed bag. I can't say it is as bad and I can't say it isn't. I'm a new business, so I'm taking everything I've got and putting it into the business and hoping for the best. So they've got a wonderful thing here at the Pit Stop Cafe. They've got a pay it forward board, so if you come in and you want to you know, treat somebody you've never met to a hot meal, then you can buy a breakfast and a cup of tea for someone, and I'm going to do that now. Can I pay forward a breakfast? You certainly can. Yeah. Would you like to pay forward a small breakfast with a cup of tea for six pounds? Let's do that, yeah. One small with breakfast a cup of tea. with a standard cup of tea or yeah. coffee is six pounds. I'm going to give you that. Okay. You can then put it onto the board. <laughs> what a wonderful community cafe. People running this business, small family business, but a lot of love for the community as well. So this is your shop mate, what do you do here? Uh, DVDs, Blu-rays. DVDs, Blu-rays, this is Cully's World. Yeah. Do you know where everything is mate? Yeah, yeah you know where, every, if I come in and ask for the Matrix, could you find the Matrix? That's in sci-fi. Yeah. Sci-fi. Sci so you know in this Aladdin's cave of DVDs you could find me the Matrix right now? Yeah, it's uh, there in the end. The sci-fi has gone uh, down there corner. Matrix is up there. There we go. You're a talented man. It was always a popular place for us to come because we lived in South Shore and whenever we did shopping back in the olden days, I'm talking back in the sort of 80s, we'd always come here to Waterloo Road. Yeah. Now the, the place is going to back in there and the council will to help people out, and everything else. The shops are shut down and you need to put money in to rejuvenate it and they're not doing it. How can it? They're yeah. doing the town centre. Yeah. Not doing the so you think they're spending money on the places where the tourists go, but yes. not, not where the locals live? No. That looked like it was a nice shop at one time. What happened to Yates's? Yeah, it closed down a couple of years ago. Yates is very popular pub on Blackpool Promenade, yeah. Everywhere I've lived, I came to Blackpool 15 years ago and I lived in Scarborough 30 years. I mean, I lived abroad, it's always at the seaside. But all British resorts, they're on their ass. They could do with upgrading, but the government's not got the money to do it. Easy as that. What do you think of Blackpool these days? Dead. Dead? Yeah. Completely dead. It's all right on the front, and looking around the back, and you're a, a, a shack, and a, yeah. It takes just shack. one block back, and it's, yeah. it's a different world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a shame. Uh. We're in a different area of Blackpool now. It's another dilapidated area just a block back from the seafront. This is the Foxhall area, but we're here for a reason. And that is because in this pub here, the Ardwick, you can get the cheapest pint in the UK. There is not a cheaper pint in this great nation. So what can you get? You can get a pint of cider, a pint of John Smith's, or a pint of Foster's for £1.80. So let's grab Stephen out the van and let's enjoy the cheapest pint in the UK. Let's do it. The cheapest pint in the UK, what's the pub like? Oh, it's fantastic. Great pub? Yeah. Yeah, is. fits yeah. the budget well. That's it, yeah. So I want two cheap pints, what can I have? Uh, you can have Foster's, John Smith's, Murphy's or Strombo. Jeez, I'll have a Foster's, what do you want mate? I'll, I'll, I'll have the Foster's for a long, long time, so let's try that. Good day, sport. Two Foster's? Two Foster's, please. 
Wonderful. That is £3.60, please. What's life like in the cheapest pub in the UK? Brilliant. Always go, always manic, but absolutely brilliant. Manic. Good customers, good, customers, good community. Good locals, good holiday makers. You enjoy brilliant. it? Brilliant, yes. Awesome. Well, cheers, guys. All the best. Cheers, mate. Cheers, What's your name? Chris. Chris. Yeah, yes, good to Thanks. Nice to yeah. chat to you, mate. Cheers. cheers. What do you think about the Ardwick, mate? You know what? That was um, really, really nice in there, wasn't it? Nice, warm, friendly pub, cheapest pint in the UK. You cannot argue with that. Can you? you can't beat it. 180 for a pint. I was expecting a bit of a uh, interesting venue, I'll say that. It is a well-run pub with good value beer. Can't beat it. Been out of use since about 2018. They cleared out and moved. The police moved to out of town. Yeah. So they've left this concrete, brutalist monstrosity <laughs> <laughs> here. It's uh, <laughs> it's an interesting uh, place. Jeez. A little bit post-apocalyptic, I think. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Is this what you think of, folks, when you think of Britain in 2024? It's abandoned brutalist monstrosity. If you look over there, you can see where someone's been sleeping in yeah. the, the doorway over there. The actual police station itself was designed by a guy called Roger Booth, who was quite infamous yeah. for building brutalist architecture police state up and down the north of england you'll see other police stations like this in other towns yeah um yeah so it's that it's just that period isn't it you know we've just had a bit of a mad one didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> i think um in my opinion yeah that architect's got a lot to answer for leaving this as the legacy in the center of blackpool but that's just my opinion now it would be fair to say that no visit to Blackpool would be complete without a trip up the famous Blackpool Tower. But unfortunately, despite the fact Mr Google says that it's open, it's closed, which is no use to us. But luckily, I've got Stephen with me and he can tell me a little bit about the history of the tower. Yeah, well, Blackpool Tower, most famous building in Blackpool, of course. 518 feet, 9 inches tall to the very top. It was built it was inspired by the Eiffel Tower after the Paris show. There was a consortium put together, not here in Blackpool, funny enough. The idea for Blackpool Tower came from outside Blackpool to build a load of towers all over the UK. And Blackpool Tower is the only one, well, one of two, should I say, that got built. There was another one got, that got built down the road in New Brighton. That met her fate, though. They ended up having to knock that one down. But Blackpool Tower is still here 130 years later. And um, yeah, 130 years old this year, how about that? Wow, yeah. Well, I promise you, mate, when I come back in summer, we'll go up, yeah? It'll definitely yeah. be open then. Definitely. When I first started doing videos, when I, the first proper video I did in Blackpool, I featured this building here. It's like an old block of flats or something. And um, it hasn't changed since I started doing videos. It's still... So how long is that? Like three or four up. years yeah, or something? about four years, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with it. What a state. So this block of houses has just been like this for 10 years? Yeah. And the council have done nothing? There's a block of three sort of hotels here, three separate hotels in this block. And um, yeah, they've been like this for, yeah, about a decade, yeah. They've had squatters in there. Yeah, vandalism, of course. Do you think a lot of people that live in Blackpool, do you think they've just come to accept it? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. There just seems to be places like this here, that there's a lot of different places like this around the town that just seem to stay like they are. There's nothing ever seems to happen. The problem with Blackpool was Freddie Laker came along with his cheap Spanish, uh, his cheap Spanish holidays destroyed Blackpool in one night, didn't they? Absolutely destroyed it. Yeah. All of the trade just went to pot. And I think it was the Thatcher government did an experiment with the B&Bs. They let all the unemployed, brought them into Blackpool. It was an experiment which went badly wrong because all the, the B&Bs fell into disrepair, didn't they? They weren't making the money. So this entire street, I'm told, is basically lined up to be knocked down for 
you know, another well, purpose to do with education. How does that make you feel, knowing that your house, that your home, might is well, under threat of compulsory purchase? I, I just uh, spent about sixty thousand pounds doing the house up, and um, so I've had the bottom, the damp course put in. I've had a new roof, um, new brand new kitchen, new boiler, new electrics. So I spent about sixty thousand pounds doing up. The new kitchen went in the week before I got the letter from the council saying that they were going to knock the houses How down. does that make you feel it, when you receive that letter? It's, it was pretty awful, to be fair. I think, but I can't see any more, you yeah. know, dilapidated yeah. hotels, and yeah. Blackpool shows me another, we keep, mate. We keep, walk, we keep uh, walking into them, don't we? Yeah, look at the state of this. Yeah. The, the Dukeries Hotel. It's not looking like it's fit for a duke now, mate. Not really. I want to take a moment to address comments I get from time to time that say, Wendell, you're only showing the deprived side of Britain. You're only showing the worst places. You're not showing the really nice things. And of course, Britain has some wonderful places, some places that are doing really well and some amazing scenery. I don't discount that. But what you have to understand is that I'm interested in showing the places that are struggling because I believe that you can truly judge the success of a nation by how those that have the least live. This is the reality of Britain in 2024. The gap is widening between haves and have nots and deprivation is growing. It concerns me and I think it needs to be documented. This is the central part of Blackpool and I'll be honest with you folks, there's a lot of deprivation, a lot of decline in the places that surround the centre, but the actual shopping centre, what I would call the high street, it's doing all right. You've got the winter gardens in the background there, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. And the, the tower there, and this precinct's all right. Yeah, we're now on Victoria Street, and we've got the the grand entrance of the winter gardens there. It's beautiful, uh, yeah. Very, like a focal point at the end of the street, and over here we can see the tower, of course, great view of the tower. We're right next to the Hounds Hill Shopping Centre as well, which is expanding all the time, and they've also they're also building a new cinema as well as part of the Hounds Hill. And um, yeah, so um, it's all, it all seems to be going on around here, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, is this an example of, you know, the people we spoke to in the outer areas saying that all the money's being spent yeah, on the centre much, yeah. and it's not finding its way to the yeah. outer areas? It does seem to be like that, yeah. Yeah, but we have to call it what it is and the actual high street centre of Blackpool yeah. seems to be all right. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not too bad. I just want to thank Stephen, mate. Thank you so much yeah, no for showing me around Blackpool. That. It's been great to see you. What do you think of Blackpool in 2024, having grown up here all your life? Well, I mentioned at the start of the video, I mentioned that we grew up in Blackpool in the 70s, and we didn't even see the decline. We didn't notice it, because we were just loving all the attractions. We used to go to all the places, and we felt we were so lucky to live in Blackpool. But then get, come the 80s, it's quite obvious that less people are coming and that sort of thing the place is starting to go down they get day trippers you don't get people staying over uh, but i think in the last sort of 10 years and um, we've, we've been walking around town now and we're seeing where there's quite a bit of money being spent now aren't we we're sitting around the town center yeah uh, we've got new hotels being built the holiday inn we've got the new tram terminus so in some areas things are looking up but i think for those areas that we've been to today some of those areas will probably continue to just sort of faster, I think, yeah. unless something serious is done. Yeah. I can't see anything um, happening you know, to, to improve those areas yeah, yeah. anytime soon. So. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I'm really grateful that you've shown me around. You are, in my mind, he's the number one YouTuber from Blackpool. 100% check out his content. I'll put a link in the description below. It's called A Walk on the Wild Side if you haven't come across it already. And yeah, thanks for showing me your Blackpool. Blackpool in 2024. There's some good stuff going on, but there's a lot of deprivation and a lot of decline in the places that just fringe the centre. But I'm sure I'll come back to Blackpool again maybe in summer, mate, and you can show me what it's like in summer. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a million, Stephen. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. So do you remember at the start of the video, those two cars that were just abandoned in the Blackpool Sea? Well, Stephen's local connections have informed us that at sunset, as the tides receded, that the council have got this JCB and they're gonna remove them. They've already got one out, the, the shallower one, 
but the deeper one, they're going to try and excavate it. So let's see how Blackpool Council pull off his feet. What's the plan? How are we going to get this car out of the sea? These chaps here come down in the in the vehicle to be able to, to do the job. Yeah. Um, JCB telehandler, um, and that'll be able to get the forks underneath the vehicle, lift it up, remove it safely. Uh, we're going to wait for the tide to web out, so yeah. if there's any debris left around, we'll ensure that the beach is left yeah. full, clean and tidy. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, and we're doing it safely. The tide's on its way out, so if we encounter any problems, we've got time to be able to uh, to make any adjustments if we need to.